We're going to be talking about genetically modified foods and the side effects and what you should be eating instead. And I'll say this, I think a lot of the information here Jeffrey's going to share with you is going to blow your mind. In fact, Jeffrey, if you don't know him, he has been the pioneer of the non-GMO movement. When you see non-GMO on a lot of the foods out there today, Jeffrey really is a big part of starting that. And also, he runs the uh, Institute of Responsible Technology. And so if you really want to continue to learn more about how to go non-GMO free, he's got some great products, great movies like Genetic Roulette out there as well. So we'll talk about that here at the end. But start off, I want to start off the program with this. Help us spread the word that food is medicine and it shouldn't be poison. Take a minute right now, punch that share button right here on Facebook and YouTube. We want to help spread that message. Also, we'd love to hear from you. So take a minute right now here on Facebook. Let us know the city you're from, the state you're from, and the country you're from. We'd love to hear from you in helping us go GMO free. We're going to dive into the first point and then we're going to say hey to a lot of you watching. Jeffrey, great to have you here. Thank you for pioneering this movement. GMO side effects, this is some of the things we're going to talk about today. Number one here, an increase in allergies. You know, genetically modified organisms, you take a gene from one species and you force it into the DNA of other species. And they found out a long time ago that when you put a gene in, it might create a protein that's an allergen. However, there's other ways that you might create allergens in a genetically modified crop. The very process of inserting the gene into the DNA causes massive collateral damage in the DNA and you could increase the existence of allergens that are produced already in the crop. Wow. For example, in Monsanto's soy, there's, a, so there's an allergen called trypsin inhibitor, which is as much as seven times higher in cooked GM soy compared wow. to cooked non-GM soy. And there was a study that just came out that found out, this is very interesting, they found out that genetically modified corn this is corn engineered to be sprayed with Monsanto's Roundup, so it's called Roundup Ready Corn, that not only does it have more Roundup in it, but it has proteins that are responsible for why rotting dead bodies smell. Wow. The names of these proteins are putrescine and cadaverin. Now, not only is it disgusting, but also it's related to allergies as well as to cancer. So it, the higher levels of putrescine and cadaverin might create higher levels of allergies. So when I go to speak at conferences and I speak at talks all over the country and all over the world, I'll ask people, what disorders and diseases did you get better from when you switched to non-GMO organic diets? And not only allergies, but all immune system wow. uh, types of diseases and disorders are a common response. We also surveyed 3,600 people who were getting better from various diseases and disorders and allergies and other um, immune system problems was right up there as one of the most popular. So if you're experiencing oh. allergies, and we, we have thousands of doctors prescribing non gmo diets, they say this is something that can turn around very, very quickly. Yeah, as Jeffrey's saying here, if you've got allergies, immune-related issues, different types of reactions you shouldn't be having, a lot of sensitivities, multiple sensitivities, GMOs could be a major, major causative factor. And think about all the people you know. Do you know people right now that have chronic allergy issues all the time? Maybe they have immune-related issues. If you know those people, hey, help us spread this word. Take a minute right now, punch that share button. We're live here teaching the world how to go GMO-free. And if you stand with Jeffrey and I, and you believe that GMOs from be banned, we'd love to hear that from you as well here on Facebook Live. I uh, got a comment here from Sandy Kelly. She says, this is great. These companies need to be outed, especially Monsanto. Linda Butler says, I love Jeffrey Smith. Love his info. Thanks from Ontario, Canada. And Jeffrey, we got people right now from all over the world. Mindy Guthrie is watching from Redding, California. Hey, Mindy, thanks for joining us here today. We've got Natalie Powell watching from Perth, Australia. Wow. Hey, Natalie, thanks for watching here today as well. Uh, we've got Dr. Scott Perlman watching from Marietta, Georgia. People from all over the world here. This is great. We love to see this, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and talk about the next one here. Antibiotic resistance. Now, there are conditions like MRSA and other issues that are continuing to just explode. Yeah. What's the cause? Well, the overuse of antibiotics causes the antibiotics to change and, and to become resistant to the antibiotics. Now, it's interesting that within most GMOs, they put in a gene that's called an antibiotic-resistant marker gene. 
It's just part of the process. It doesn't really have to be there, but they put it in there, and the British Medical Association and the scientists at the FDA and the American Medical Association have all said, this is not a good idea. We need to protect the public from this antibiotic-resistant marker gene, because if the gene transfers into bacteria and creates antibiotic-resistant uh, pathogenic bacteria, we're just spreading this horrible situation right now where we're losing the effectiveness of our antibiotics. Now, there was a study done and published in 2004 in Nature Biotechnology that showed that part of the gene inserted into soybeans transferred into the DNA of the bacteria living inside our gut. Now, they don't know if it continued to function because they didn't check. But if this thing does continue to function, it means we may be creating antibiotic-resistant pathogens. Wow. Also, because of the corn that produces its own insecticide, we may be converting our intestinal flora into living pesticide factories. There's all sorts of things that might stick in our gut in the long term if this gene that gets transferred continues to function, and that's one of the reasons. Also, the major reason they genetically engineer crops is to spray them with Roundup herbicide. Roundup, it, it turns out, is an antibiotic. It's patented as such. So we're getting Roundup in the food supply, which can potentially increase the use, increase the, the growth of antibiotic-resistant diseases. Wow, thanks so much, Jeffrey. All right, we've got some more people jumping on. We've got uh, Funasak watching from Thailand. Hey, thanks for joining us here today. It looks like we have someone on from, uh, uh, from Mexico, someone else who just joined us here from Spain. Awesome, guys. We've got people jumping on from all over the world. And hey, thanks for sharing this. I see so many of you guys are helping share this information and being on mission with us. Now, these next two are huge, Jeffrey. Let's talk about both of these together. Problems with the endocrine system and the reproductive system. Actually, let me backtrack again. Would you just rattle off real quick for everybody the top genetically modified foods that they want to stay away from? Okay. Soy, corn, cotton, which is used in cottonseed oil, canola, which is used in canola oil, alfalfa, which is used as animal feed, as everyone else, as all the other products are. We also have sugar from sugar beets. We have also some yellow squash, some zucchini, some papaya from Hawaii or China, and just introduced to the market, apples and potatoes that don't brown when they're sliced. Those are the, ten, the, uh, um, the 11 genetically modified crops, plus the animal products from animals that are fed those products. So again, these conditions we're talking about, if you're going and buying packaged food at the store or eating out fast food, and you're eating products with corn in them, which is in almost everything, soy, canola, these things that Jeffrey's talking about, here are some of the side effects. Let's jump in here. Endocrine issues and reproductive system disorders. So they took a, they took a bunch of rats and they fed them Roundup-ready corn, or they have just put Roundup in the drinking water, or they just fed them the Roundup-ready corn that hadn't been sprayed with Roundup. So basically, they wanted to figure out if there was problems, what caused it. It turns out one of the problems that occurred was damage to the pituitary gland, which is the master gland in the body. So if we're getting damage to our pituitary gland, that could be a serious problem. In addition, there was a study done in, in, in Moscow where they fed rats, female rats, genetically modified soy starting two weeks before they got pregnant, continue with the soy. It turns out more than half of the babies died within three weeks compared to a 10% death rate in the moms that were eating non-genetically modified soy. They find that mice that were fed genetically modified soy in a study in Italy had damage to their young sperm cells, to the, to the testicles as well as to the early sperm cells. There was a study done in Brazil. They found damage to the, in rats to the ovaries and to the, to the um, uterus. In, in a study with pigs, they found the uterus was 25% heavier. So the reproductive disorders and the endocrine disorders are a serious problem, and Roundup or GMOs may be related to that. We don't know which. It's probably both. Wow. Incredible. And think about all the women out there, Jeffrey, that are struggling with PCOS, infertility, thyroid issues, and so many chronic endocrine, reproductive-related problems. I mean, it's just... Let me it's tell staggering. you, and this is a good introduction. I'm doing a film now with Amy Hart called Secret Ingredients, and it's about families that heal from chronic conditions when they switch to organic foods. You can watch the trailer at secretingredientsmovie.org. In fact, we're doing a fundraiser right now to finish yeah. the movie. We visited a clinic where it's a chiropractic clinic. In addition to chiropractic, they put everyone on an organic diet. They had 77 couples who were infertile. Many of them had been to fertility clinics with no success. Guess how many of the 77 ended up with children? 77. Wow. 100% success rate. 
and switching to organic was a major component of their success. And so we think that the rise in fertility clinics from 40 years ago to 440 in the United States or more is likely being contributed to by GMOs and Roundup. And so we really recommend for people trying to get pregnant, for many reasons, get on organic food. Not just so that you can get pregnant, but that also can take a lot of the toxins out of the blood. So I know some doctors that say, switch to organic at least two weeks before trying to have kids and stay organic through the pregnancy for sure. Mm, great advice there, Jeffrey. Couldn't agree more. I'm thinking about how many women don't know this information and they need to know it. So, hey, help us spread this message right now because there are women out there who need to hear this and need to learn how to go GMO. Take a minute right now, press that share button, like button, if you like this live training. Jeffrey, let's move on here, number five here. And by the way, we've got a lot of great charts. Once we get through these first six, some really things that are incredible. I'm so excited for you to share with us. Increased aging symptoms. So they took rats that were fed genetically modified soy and they found that within eight months, they had damage to the testicles, pancreas, and to um, the liver. But they took some other rats and they continued to feed them GMO soy compared to non-GMO soy. And by the end of their life, those that were on the GM soy had ag accelerated aging. So the signs of the liver accelerated aging. They also, I talked about that other study with the Roundup Ready corn they fed to rats. Well, it turns out those that were eating the Roundup Ready corn died earlier. So whether you call that accelerated aging or premature death, we wow. don't either. So the whole process of eating genetically engineered foods may be causing serious disruptions of all these different systems. Now, if when the, the butchers tell us that when they cut into a, a carcass of a, of, a, of a cow that's been eating GMO versus non-GMO, they look and smell totally different. And it, the, there's a discoloration that happens within a year for the cows that makes people who are raiding the cows as if they're older. So they have lower, they get lower cost in some cases, and it has a terrible smell, which might be the problems with the gut bacteria. And so I've talked to farmers' wives who say, I've seen the inside of animals that are fed GMO and non-GMO, and I will never feed uh, meat from an animal that's been fed GMOs to my children. So I haven't had that experience where I've seen it or smelled it, but I've talked to others who have. Well, I got a question here. This is from Paul Sabaj. He said, do you reckon, recommend any supplements? And I think the question is, do you recommend any supplements for the detoxification if somebody's consumed GMO in the past? Well, step number one, I'll say this, is stop eating GMOs. Right. I mean, that by far is step number one. Go organic, go GMO free. And then after that, I'll actually say this. I think foods or specifically herbal supplements that support the liver and kidney detoxification, cellular detoxification is very important. In fact, uh, promoting the uh, increase of glutathione in your body would be important. You're going to get that uh, specifically from foods like milk thistle is incredible. Bupleurum, a pop popular herb in Chinese medicine. Dandelion is also very good at that. And then also herbs like turmeric and taking, ideal the combination is taking bitter herbs that support li liver detoxifications like the ones I mentioned, taking those with other herbs that are spicy like cayenne pepper because that actually increases the amount of it that gets into your bloodstream and your cell. So turmeric with Piperine is actually a very uh, common supplement there as well. But again, lots of herbs, lots of vegetables. But the biggest thing is just stop eating them. Your body is really powerful at detoxifying itself. That brings us to the next topic here. Probably one of the biggest side effects of GMOs potentially in the future that we're going to start to continue to uncover is cancerous tumor growth. Well, in that study we're talking about with the two-year study on rats, they fed them Roundup Ready corn, they fed them Roundup, they fed them the corn. All three groups had multiple massive tumors, huge tumors. Wow. You may have seen these pictures. Just, just horrible. I talked to another researcher in the, from the Russian Academy of Sciences. <clears throat> Her lab animals also had massive tumors. Um, we know that Roundup is sprayed on most GMOs. Roundup is classified by the World Health Organization as a class 2A carcinogen, meaning they said it causes cancer in animals, it causes mutations in human DNA, which can lead to cancer, and where it is sprayed in large amounts, it creates a high spike in cancer in the population. They wouldn't call it a class 1 carcinogen because they didn't have enough studies, but I think that's enough studies for us to determine we don't want to expose ourselves to Roundup herbicide, which is sprayed on GMOs, and unfortunately, it's sprayed on the grains in the United States, on the wheat, barley, rye, rice, non-GMO stuff. However, it's sprayed just before harvest as a ripening agent to dry it down, and it ends up in the food and we eat it. 
So the number one recommendation is to buy organic. And if you can't buy organic, then at least buy non-GMO. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jeffrey. Well, we're going to dive in here into something. I'm so excited for Jeffrey to share this with you. He's going to quickly go through the rise in certain specific diseases from autism to cancer and other conditions, maybe even a condition that you're struggling with or someone you love. He's going to go through the top 25 conditions that are being affected. Jeffrey, let's go ahead and start going through this. Okay. So here we have, this is the amount of glyphosate sprayed, and this happens to be a four-year average, and this is the autism prevalence of six-year-olds according to government research. Now, wow. that looks like it's a very tight line. Now, if, if there's, a, there's a way of telling if something is correlated 100%, and that would get a value of one, an R value of one. This is 0.9972, which means this is a very, very tight correlation. Now, I got to warn you, it's a correlation that doesn't mean that one affects the other. It could be coincidence. However, we don't think it, it is a coincidence because if you look at the physiology of autistic children, according to the published research, as my friend Dr. Stephanie Seneff has in MIT, she found all these particular disorders and, and changes in the physiology from gut bacteria to all sorts of things. And then she looked at the biochemistry of Roundup and its active ingredient glyphosate. So this is glyphosate, the active ingredient of Roundup. And she found that they fit hand in glove and that that for her demonstrated a, a potential causative relationship, that the glyphosate is linked to the explosion of autism. And so we do know that in some cases when families switch to organic food, which takes out the GMOs and also these toxic chemicals, their kids can get better. We have in our Secret Ingredients movie, which you can watch the trailer at secretingredientsmovie.com, we have three kids who are autistic in the film. Two are no longer autistic, and one was switched to a mainstream classroom. So we're going to go through several different charts, and I'm only going to show the charts, show the relationship, and give you the name of the disease. We're just looking to see if there's a pattern here, if there's a pattern between glyphosate, and in some cases the line also includes the GMOs that have been introduced, the GMO soy and corn, and the diseases to see if there's a relationship. Here we have inflammatory bowel disease. Now in my research, in my, in my survey of 3,600 people, um, it matched the same experience as speaking to audiences at 150 lectures and asking people, what got better when you switched to non-GMO? Can you guess? Digestive disorders. Absolutely. 80% or more of the people that showed an improvement of anything showed an improvement in digestive disorders. So it's the number one reported improvement, both in terms of people directly, in terms of 3,600 people uh, surveyed, and in the hundreds and hundreds of doctors that we've interviewed as part of these surveys. And specifically Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Okay. Now we have deaths due to intestinal infection, another gastrointestinal disorder. Wow. Here we have congenital birth defects. Roundup is linked to birth defects, and you can read that, a lot of information on that online. Um, this is kidney failure, death due to kidney failure. This has the GMO soy and corn line as well as the Roundup uh, glyphosate line. Here we have hepatitis C, so the immune system is not functioning as well. And the liver, is the liver and kidneys are two of the most important organs that are targeted with GMOs and Roundup. Some recent studies show serious debilitating effects from very, very tiny amounts of Roundup in the drinking water of rats. Here we have ADHD. It's an interesting thing that Roundup blocks certain metabolic pathways in the body. One is called the shikimate pathway, used by the gut bacteria to produce the building blocks of serotonin, wow. of melatonin, of dopamine. You know how important those are for mood and behavior. Yeah. When you don't have enough serotonin, melatonin, and dopamine, you can face pain problems, depression, anxiety, con uh, cognitive problems, sugar, sugar regulation, etc. Here we have anxiety, again, possibly a result of the, the, the deprivation of serotonin from the action of Roundup or glyphosate on this gut bacteria. Schizophrenia, another potential from that particular same disorder. Here we started to get into the cancers, liver and bile duct cancer, going up with the soy and corn that are GMO plus the, um, the glyphosate. This is kidney and renal pelvic cancer. This is urinary and bladder cancer. This is thyroid cancer. Wow. This is deaths due to acute myeloid leukemia. This is uh, incidence of diabetes. Wow. And there's many potential reasons why GMOs and Roundup may be related to diabetes. Deaths due to stroke. 
This is deaths from senile dementia. This is deaths from Alzheimer's disease. This is deaths from Parkinson's disease. This is deaths due to obesity. This is deaths due to hypertension. This is anemia, dementia, insomnia, which might be related to the melatonin, which is necessary mm. for the circadian rhythms, which may be suppressed, as we talked about. This is vitamin D deficiency, which is the result of wow. another metabolic pathway that's interfered with by glyphosate. Mm. And here we go to the summary. Now, I've got to say one thing, is that we mentioned di di um, digestive disorders. And I know you've discussed this before with this audience. Leaky gut, mm -hmm. okay? We know that, that the Roundup can cause leaky gut holes between the cells in the intestines. The intestines are only one cell thick. So you may have holes between your your gut and your bloodstream. We know that the Bt toxin produced in corn can poke holes in cells. So you may have holes in the cells and between cells. If you have leaky gut, can you think of which of those disorders and diseases might be related to leaky gut? Because it's part, it's a long part of that list. Most of them, especially intestinal issues, immune-related issues are huge as well. Right. Cancer as well. Yeah. Um, we have uh, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. I mean, autism, absolutely. Oh, oh yeah, totally. Now, autoimmune disease is related to leaky gut, and here's how I describe it. Normally, the proteins in the food is, is, is digested into little itsy-bitsy pieces. That's the technical term. <laughs> and then that gets absorbed into the bloodstream, then it gets used. However, when you have holes in the walls of the intestines, then big, large, monster-type proteins get into the bloodstream, and the immune system attacks. And so it's a very modern immune system. They all get out their iPhones, and they take pictures of the attacker, and they post it on their Facebook, and then it's, but it's, it's an old, it's an old iPhone, and it's pixelated. And so when the immune system attacks anything that looks like that, they may attack the thyroid, they may attack the microvilli or the pancreas, because it looks like the attacker because of the pixelated uh, in their own Facebook. So this is what's called autoimmune disease, where the body starts to attack itself, because of leaky gut and old iPhones. So that's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've never heard that analogy, Jeffrey, and I love it, but I mean, it's, it's spot on. I mean, what you're saying here, and one of the things, again, what Jeffrey talked about here, look at all of the digestive-related issues, immune-related conditions, and cancer, things affecting the cell. And we know this to be true. I mean, many of you viewers know this, that your gut is related to the health also of your brain. It's related to the health of your skin, all of these things. And when you're consuming genetically modified foods, it's going to follow that path Jeffrey talked about. It's going to destroy good microbes in the gut, tear holes in the gut wall, get into your bloodstream, cause these immune reactions, and cause system-wide damage in your body. And Jeffrey, I appreciate you so much what you're doing. If you, Jeffrey, if this is the first time you've seen him, he is really the man behind the non-GMO movement. And one of the things you need to know, and I, why we appreciate all of you viewing this right now, is we need to take a stand right now. We need to say no to GMOs. We're against it. We're, we're battling a giant right now in Monsanto, the most evil company in the world, along with some of these other companies. And we've got to vote with our dollars here. And I want to talk about a few of the products Jeffrey here has that I love. Now, I have my brother-in-law as a chiropractor. My own brother is a chiropractor. My cousin. Uh, I have a lot of people who practice natural medicine and chiropractic in my family, and they play this DVD in their office all the time. So I want to encourage you, especially if you're a doctor watching, make sure you get some of Jeffrey's products like Genetic Roulette. Play this DVD in the office or your clinic for your patients or clients to see. Also, we've got, he has some incredible books here. Seeds of Deception is awesome. Genetic Roulette and GMO Myths and Truths. And you can get these products and support the movement. Listen, anytime you buy a product, it's going to go towards Jeffrey's nonprofit organization, which is all about banning GMOs and making them label GMOs nationwide. Jeffrey, this still shocks me that people can put these foods in our products that we give to kids and they don't even have to label it today. It's I know. shocking. I know. So go to responsibletechnology.org, that's .org, and check out these products. So first of all, this we have other people's products like Myths and Truths, and we're going to be interviewing more and more uh, physicians and experts on answering that question that was asked earlier, how do you detox? So we're going to talk about it, and we may bring you in as yeah. well to talk about that. So if you want to know how to detox from it, first of all, avoid GMOs, but sign up for our newsletter at Responsible Technology. We're going to have one coming in 
February that you don't want to miss. There's some new research in two different publications that shows some interesting reactions in the physiology to protect against these dangers. We also have a speaker training program. We have activists. We're a nonprofit, a 501c3. So if you'd like to support our work, and we want to spread this message around the world. I've personally been to 42 countries speaking about GMOs. I expect to go to seven more this year. But now what we want to do is to open up offices and to actually bring this behavior change messaging that has moved the market in the United States. We already have Nestle's advertising on television that its coffee creamer is non-GMO. We have Dan in removing GMO wow. from its animal feed. So many companies are lining up because consumers are shopping with, are voting with their dollars. Now we want to finish that tipping point in the United States and then export it around the world and also make sure it includes animal feed, which is the biggest bulk of all the acreage of GMOs goes to animals. So you could support us, sign up for our newsletter, and keep informed, and then share this information with others. Because in this case, in the United States, our government has been marching lockstep with Monsanto yes. for 20 or, 20 or 30 years. So if you look at the WikiLeaks exposure, it turns out the State Department is deployed on behalf of the biotech industry. The uh, FDA is mandated to promote GMOs. The USDA Secretary of Agriculture was the biotech governor of the year. It goes on and on. So we can't expect good laws and good regulation, but we don't need them. The Euro Europeans kicked out GMOs because people didn't want them, and so the food companies responded. And so back in April of 1999, Nestle's and Unilever said no more GMOs in Europe because their press was reporting the health dangers, but not the U.S. press, so those same companies and the rest of the food industry in Europe, although they removed GMOs there, they continued to sell, to sell unsuspecting Americans GMOs. Wow. That process is now unfolding. We're now turning it around. So we want to finish that process by having more and more people buy non-GMO, especially for the children who are most at risk, and we want to spread that around the world. So all the people from all these other countries can enjoy a non-GMO food supply as we are starting to develop in the United States. So remember, stay away from some of these foods as Jeffrey has taught us today. Stay away from corn products that are genetically modified. Soy, canola, alfalfa, papaya. He even talked about corn and uh, uh, apples and potatoes. Watch out for those getting on shelves that could potentially be GMO in the future. Canola oil, cottonseed oil. Stay away from these products and stay informed. Go to responsibletechnology.org. I just had a doctor on here ask, where can I get this DVD for my patients? Again, you can get Jeffrey's DVD, Genetic Roulette, by going to responsibletechnology.org. And again, by getting that, not only you're transforming the lives of your patients, your friends and family, but also you're supporting the cause and banding with Jeffrey and myself to teach the world how to go non-GMO. Also, hey, if you've enjoyed this live training, take a minute right now, help us spread this message. Punch that share button right now. Help us share this message because it can transform the health of millions and millions of lives. Jeffrey, thanks so much. We really appreciate you guys watching today. Jeffrey, I appreciate you flying in uh, here to Nashville all the way from San Francisco today. And again, thank you viewers who are voting with your dollars, shopping organic and non-GMO. We appreciate you as well. Safe eating.